Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing good. I hope you guys are doing well. So you guys, in today's video, I'm going to be discussing how I am raising my daughters, okay? How I plan to raise my daughters, how I am currently raising my daughters, my biggest fear when it comes to raising girls, how raising girls, how it feels raising just girls. I don't know how it is to raise boys anyway, so I can't really, I can't really compare, but I can just tell you how it feels to raise girls. Basically, just talking about being a girl mom. You guys know I have three girls, Talk about being a girl mom but mostly about like my biggest fears i actually got a question like this in my last q a and i've always gotten questions like this so i decided that today i'm just going to sit down and discuss it with you guys okay so if you're interested in knowing how this beautiful mom of girls is raising her daughters <laughs> Then just keep watching so you guys i didn't make any notes i didn't make any jottings i just want to speak straight from my heart okay so basically you guys know i have three daughters the first one is five going on six second one is three going on four and the third one is just eight months okay going on one year anyway okay so basically growing up i have always wanted to have daughters okay i have always dreamt about having a daughter i never even actually dreamt of having a son i wanted a son i mean quite all right like i mean it's normal to want boys and girls but i used to dream of my daughter <laughs> Okay, I remember the first dream I've ever had about me carrying a child or having a child or having a, you know, a baby, it was a girl, okay? In fact, I think like the first two or three dreams I've had of carrying a baby, it was a girl. I mean, before I started having kids, okay? So, when I had my daughters, I was really excited, you know, to have girls, okay? Anyway, so being a girl mom, I love being a girl mom. Like, I think I'm a typical girl mom. I love girly things. I love beautiful things. I love like doing hair and dressing up and stuff like that with my kids for myself not so much which is funny but for my kids i love dressing them up as in they're like my real life <laughs> dolls it's funny how even though i have three girls when i see boys i'm like ah oh, he's a cute boy he's a cute boy right there okay but when i see cute baby girls i feel like oh i should want another one like i want another baby girl like so yeah i've always loved girls is all i'm trying to say okay but i've met a couple of people especially women who said they did not want to have daughters they did not want to have that they are scared of having girls maybe because of how their childhoods went maybe because of you know society or whatever but they said they are actually scared of having girls i know someone that said when she had when she knew she was when she found out that she was having a girl that she just you know had a mini panic attack she wanted just boys okay so it actually exists because some people feel like most women always want daughters no there are a lot of women who actually do not want daughters they actually just want sons and a lot of men who don't care about sons who actually just want daughters okay yeah the world is diverse okay deal with it <laughs> anyway so i said all this to say that there are several challenges that come with raising girls actually okay on the lighter side i mean with you know taking care of their hair their dressing their mood swings you know raising them like you know you know how girls are now like there are a lot of lighter uh, challenges that come with raising girls to me those are nothing okay i don't have any issues with them i i actually enjoy it i like making my kids hair i like dressing them up i like buying stuff for them even though there are things they actually their dresses and all of that are more expensive but i don't really care i like all the hair bands that's why i said my children must have hair i don't understand when women go and bob their daughter's hair at one year for what even if it's just two strands i'm going to put ribbon on those two strands <laughs> okay that's just me even if it's just two strands like cora basically had two strands on her birth on her first birthday i packed the two strands with ribbon like no i don't understand bobbing my daughter's hair because i love all those things okay so um all those challenges with girls i don't really have an issue with it okay i think for me one of my biggest fears with raising daughters is protecting them from the society okay let me just put it this way i don't want to have any fear okay i keep saying it because sometimes what you fear the most will come upon you okay but what i'm trying to say is that it's something that i think about more something i'm really concerned about okay it's about protecting my kids protecting their childhood preserving their childhood okay i don't want them to ex experience abuse of any sort because one thing that abuse does to you whether sexual or physical or emotional or whatever abuse especially as a, as, a, as a child one thing abuse does to you is that it quickly changes your childhood it quickly makes you mature okay it ends your childhood basically especially when it is sexual it ends your childhood okay and I, i'm saying this because i experienced it it actually ends your childhood okay that childhood innocence that childhood you know carefree just playing and enjoying your life is no longer going to be there okay you're, you're always going to have that fear of either being abused again or you now you now don't see things as innocently as you used to see them you now know that okay i shouldn't be naked or my nakedness is not is not good or you know 
you know those childhood privileges that we had where you are naked you are running up and down you are being a child you are looking at each other's peepees you know you don't really care like it's nothing to you once you experience any form of sexual abuse that ends okay it ends immediately and not only does it end at childhood even as an adult right now when i try to think back at my childhood one of the first prominent memories about my childhood is about the abuse okay it's not even about playing or whatever my when i'm thinking of oh when i was a child abuse comes first to my head and then i try to just push that memory aside and then i start you know thinking of other nice fun things okay so because of how i experienced this i try really hard to preserve my children's childhood by preventing them from being abused from any by anybody you know in any form or shape or whatever okay um but what i'm trying to say is that any parents should be concerned about this okay whether you have boys or you have girls okay whether you have boys or you have girls a lot of people think that it's just girls because the person that asked me this question asked me about how you feel raising girls in today's society okay it's not only about girls so it's about boys a lot of boys face it but they don't talk okay because they are boys and they shouldn't be talking right right a lot of people say it's because they are boys i mean boys are the bad ones girls are the good ones okay so if anything happens to you deal with it because all of you are bad all of you are rotten human beings only girls should be protected at all costs okay you guys are perpetrators and girls are the innocent ones okay whether grown woman or young girl girls are, are perpetually innocent they are always innocent the boys are always the perpetrators are always the you know the terrible human beings okay so a lot of boys don't come out to say these things but it happen to boys a whole lot okay a lot of house helps are abusing boys a lot of aunties a lot of uh, mommy's friend this one a lot of children a lot of boys a lot of men in our, in our society right now their first sexual encounter were with older women at a younger age okay and i mean prepubescent years teenage years most of them were abused by older women house helps aunties neighbors and stuff like that okay but they don't come out to say it anyway so i'm saying that this should be a concern to anybody whether male or female okay i know that you have male or female children okay but as a mom of girls it's a concern for me as a mom basically it's a concern for me whether i have girls or not it's a concern for me i want to preserve my children's childhood for as long as possible okay so what i do to protect them is one i do not leave my children with strangers like i don't leave my children with strangers i don't allow strangers you know talk to them too much in this house even if people come like in fact this work we've been doing in my kitchen if you guys have been following my channel for a while you know that i've been doing some work in my kitchen the work is finally done by the way when workers come to this house if my children are at home i tell them oh yeah everybody go upstairs to your room and go and stay in your room i don't want to come and be chatting with anybody i don't want to come and be greeting anybody i don't want to come and look at anybody like because cora is quite curious okay so she's always coming down to see mommy what are they doing mommy who is this man what is he doing i'll say <laughs> like i'm always giving her eye i was like and i call her my actual a little bit and say take those children upstairs and make sure they stay there okay but even aside that we have cameras in this house okay yeah i have cameras in my house so i'm always checking the cameras um i talk to them a lot i tell them about their bodies their private parts I, I tell them everything they need to know about not sex in particular but about protecting themselves protecting their bodies i teach them what their private parts are i will add extra parts that may not be private parts per se but i add extra parts because now from clap if they take enter dance okay so i tell them nobody should, nobody should touch your hand what person touching your hand for that's what i mean like your elbow your arms you know your thighs your leg what are you touching your legs for what, are, what kind of play is that are you now touching each other like that okay so i always tell them don't allow anybody look at your vagina or touch it don't allow anybody to look at your bum bum or touch it don't allow anybody to touch your armpits don't allow anybody to kiss you whether on the cheeks on the forehead on the lips or wherever don't allow anybody to kiss you even if anybody kisses you you report okay so i try to talk to them kids will be kids sometimes they forget i keep i tell them almost every day when i say every day i mean almost every single day i have a talk with my kids about abuse i don't say it like in a very I don't say it in a very vulgar way. I don't tell them. You know, I just tell them things that they should look out for and things that they should not allow. Okay, and trust Cora. Cora is a champion. Ah, Cora has always come to tell me, "Mommy, this boy in my class was touching my elbow." I'll say, "Tell him not touch your elbow again." Okay. <laughs> Like I said, even though elbow is not really a bad place to touch, but now from clap, they take enter dance. Okay, so I don't even want that clapping because I don't want to deal with the dancing. So I don't even want the clapping in the first place. Okay, but not just strangers. Even inside the house, we have cameras. Okay, because again, a lot of perpetrators, a lot of people who abuse children 
are not strangers. A lot of them are actually family members. They're actually, you know, neighbors, cousins, friends. I don't allow them to play anyhow with anybody, okay? For as long as I can protect them, I'm going to do my best to protect them. So when it comes to abuse, I'm really, really particular about it, okay? I'm not just sexual, okay? Even when it comes to emotional, physical abuse, I always ask them, did anybody beat you? Did anybody beat you? I don't care whether it's a small boy, you. I don't care whether it's a big woman, you. I don't care whether it's a, a, a child. Did anybody beat you? Who beat you? What did, what happened? Okay, tell me what happened. So I always ask them, I don't anybody to beat them. I've told my house help, I don't allow my house help to beat my children. I know, yes, some people say, yeah, they're allowed, they don't, yeah, that, that's for you, okay? You're free to do whatever you want to do with your own kids. For me, I don't allow my house help to beat my children. And the reason why I don't allow it is because a lot of these people were not raised right, okay? For me, the helps I have right now, I really love them, I like them, they're very good girls, like, yeah, considering their background, they are actually very, very good guests. Like, I'm actually blessed to have them. But at the same time, please don't discipline my child, okay? I'm at home. I'm a stay-at-home mom, okay? I do my YouTube from my house, okay? So I'm at home. So anything they do, come and tell me. Just come and... I'm, I'm always there. Like, is it I'm there with you when, when it happens? Or I'm downstairs or I'm upstairs, okay? If I'm downstairs filming, come and tell me. So nobody should just touch my... Nobody should touch my child. Like, I don't believe in that one that they say it takes a village to raise a child. No, no village should come and help me raise my child, okay? Because a village raised me and look at how I turned out. <laughs> I thought that's well, though. I thought that's well. But what I'm saying is that a village raised me, and so many things went wrong with my childhood, okay? So I don't want any village to come and raise my children. Me and my husband, we are village enough to raise, my, raise our kids, okay? So I have to, anybody that comes to this house, I used to expressly state it to them that the day you beat my child, I'm going to fling you from the top veranda out. Like, I'm going to fling you from the balcony. <laughs> I won't just send you out of my house. I'm going to fling you out, okay? Do not touch my child. Do not beat my child. Because at the end of the day, I'm raising my children, right? My children do not look for trouble senselessly, okay? They all, I mean, of course, they are kids, so they do, they do the wrong things. Sometimes they don't listen when you talk to them. But my kids are not terrible human beings. What are you beating them for? Are they armed robbers? Are they thieves? What are you beating them for? So I always tell them, do not touch my child. Anything my child does to you. Come and tell me. And anytime, you know, my girls come to report, I make it a duty to always discipline my children. I will hear from both sides. I'm not going to just take your, your word for it and start disciplining my child. No. When you come and tell me what happened, I'll come and ask my child what's happened. I mean, I know my children. I know when they're lying. I know when they're, they're not saying the truth. I know when they're twisting things. And I know when they just, you know, had, they're just misunderstanding things, okay? So I will not ask them what happened. They'll tell me what happened. If they're at fault, then I discipline them for it, okay? Basically, I talk to them or punish them or tell them, go and, go and face the wall or no tab for you or something like that, okay? I know how to raise my own kids. So please don't come and help me, eh? You can only advise me, then I'll implement. Don't come and do it directly, please. I'm taking God to beg all of you now so that you will not say you do not hear <laughs> i don't even know who i'm talking to but now i always say this is that everybody raise your children right though everybody raise your children right because if your child touches my child i'm going to beat your child i'm going to beat your child <laughs> i just pray my children don't touch other people's children as well okay but uh, yeah i'm raising them that way don't touch anybody don't beat anybody in fact even when they playfully beat each other or even when they some not even playfully even when they beat each other or they start biting or whatever I take it seriously, like, I doesn't need to turn red, like, I, I'm black, but I'll turn red, like, if I hear that you pinch somebody, or you beat somebody, or you, you beat somebody as in biting the person, I don't even joke with that, okay, so, I expect that other parents, too, do not allow it with their kids, okay, because my kids are going to mix with your kids, and if I, if your child bullies my child, I'm gonna step in, okay, I am going to step in, so everybody, please, raise your children right, too, raise your children right, make, make, let's, let's just avoid any confrontations in the future, okay, thank you, <laughs> and while disciplining them, I always try to reason with them, I try to correct them, because once I realize that a mistake our parents made there uh, is, they beat us, or they punished us for things that were just innocent childhood mistakes, okay? I don't beat my children for innocent childhood mistakes. I won't beat my child because you broke plates or you broke you broke uh, 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 this thing, anything in the house. I won't beat my child for that. Even the day my children broke our television, I didn't beat them for that, okay? Even though that one was even, it was even stupidity. Like, they actually threw something where they were throwing things in the parlor and then hit the TV and TV broke, okay? So, but I didn't beat them for that, okay? Because children are going to be children. Foolishness abounds in the heart of a child, okay? So, yeah, children are going to be children. So, I'm not going to keep beating you for any childhood mistake. I don't even punish them for everything, okay? What I really punish them for are things that I have warned you about several times. Things that I feel like you are old enough to understand because I discipline them according to their age, okay? Some mistakes that Eva will make, I'll let it go. But if Cora makes them, I'm going to talk, okay? Because I know that Eva is, is younger than Cora, okay? So, according to their age, if the things that Cora does now, 
I will not tolerate it because you are old enough, because I believe that you are old enough to understand this concept and understand these things, okay? So that's what I mean by I discipline them according to their ages, okay? So, I have things that Cora will do and I will punish her and if I will do the same thing, I will tell her if I don't do it again because I know that you are not the same age, okay? So I discipline my children according to their age. I don't punish them or beat them or whatever for any ch normal childhood mistakes, you know, for just being children. I don't do that, okay? In fact, the things that I actually spank my children for, like actual spanking, is things that are dangerous, okay? For instance, you're going to play at the balcony and you're climbing the rails. Why? What's wrong? What, like, are you okay? <laughs> you know, so I always point, I always spank them for that, okay? Um, if they are climbing, because our, the parlor upstairs, the small parlor upstairs, it's, it's like, it has a railing as well. If they are climbing it, I punish them for that because it's very dangerous. If you are playing with sharp objects, well, if you're playing with sharp objects, I don't really punish them. I just collect it from them and tell them not to do it again. But aside that, I do mainly punishment, okay? Kneel down, face the wall. If you stay something, you're going to clean it, okay? I don't care how long it takes. You're going to clean it until you finish cleaning it. Well, they might not clean it to my satisfaction, but they will clean it, okay? I'll make sure you suffer cleaning it. <laughs> you know, that's what I do for them. If you spill something, you're going to wipe it off, okay? So, I don't believe in spanking children just unnecessarily just because uh, anything you spank i don't beat my children although i shout my husband is always warning me about the shouting part he tells me not to shout i shout too much my shouting affects the brain it doesn't just affect the children when i'm shouting it also affects him but for me most times i shout out of frustration i know it's not good but i do it okay we're all human beings if you don't shout that's your business okay whatever but we're all human beings me i shout out of frustration i shout to relieve myself that's stress people are giving me i want to give it to everybody <laughs> I want to share it back to everybody, okay? I'm just reciprocating that lack of peace that you want to give me. You want to take my peace? I'm going to take your own peace back, okay? <laughs> so sometimes it's even out of frustration. It's even out of maybe I'm working, I'm trying to meet a deadline, and you're coming and you're shouting in my ear, mommy, 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 this one, that one. Eh, and I'll, I'll now leave my... Because I actually listen to my children a lot, though. I, people even point out it as in my videos that it's like I listen to my children a lot, okay? Yeah, I listen to them a lot. But sometimes, again, they are children. Sometimes they are talking rubbish. They are talking in the nonsense. So you interrupt my very important work that's going to give me money to turn and listen to, eh, that is how Barbie now did this sound and eh, the leg of my toy is broken and you are crying. Yeah? Sometimes Cora will come and be crying for something so ridiculous. So ridiculous. Yeah, they did not give me another ice cream. I will say, oh, you don't have problems in this life, Abby. You don't have problems in this life. You are living a very comfortable life. So you want to induce problems by crying. And this thing I'm saying is actually very, very true, okay? I can't remember who was saying this. I think it was Jordan Peterson that was saying it that, you know, a lot of people that have comfortable, happy, peaceful life, when your life is basically going in order, you know, there's, there's no chaos or whatever, people try to create the chaos, okay? That is why I see people that have money they are rich money is not a problem they're not hungry nothing is that they don't really have any problems in this life like typical you know third world country kind of problems they don't have this kind of problems so they go and create problems for themselves because it's almost like chaos is always part of, chaos is part of life okay so they try to create problems for themselves some people going into drugs some people going into very dangerous spots like they need that adrenaline adrenaline rush they need that rush they need that next thing they need that something better something more to make them feel alive especially when everything is is going well for them they need something more to make them feel alive okay anyway that's a more complicated you know serious concept okay you guys should look into it chaos and order okay but when, it, when I bring it down to my kids on a, on a micro, minute level, I see it as you're not hungry, you're not, uh, you're not uh, starving, you're not on the street, you have AC blowing, you have so many toys, you have, you're going to good schools, everything in your life is just pink. You're just a pink at your butt child. That is why you're crying because they didn't give you a second spoon of ice cream. Because you saw ice cream now, because you saw ice cream. If you did not have, uh, if you were by the roadside with children starving, then they managed to see a bar and eat. You're going to eat the bar, you're going to be happy. So things like that is what frustrates me the most when it comes to raising kids. For me, a lot of people say that raising girls, girls are quite emotional. I agree, but I don't know if it's a girl thing or it's a child thing, okay? I don't know. I've seen my friends that have boys and for instance now, Nelo's first two kids are boys, my first two kids are girls, okay? Cora and Kobe behave in a similar manner. Eva and Kaito behave in a similar manner, okay? To an extent, or not totally, but to an extent, okay? So when it comes to the being emotional and stuff like that, I won't really say it's a girl thing because Kobe and Cora are kind are quite similar. Even though Cora is okay, well, maybe I'll say the girl thing because Cora is on another level when it comes to that one. Though. But Ava is not emotional at all. Okay, well, she's kind of emotional. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know what I'm analyzing here. I don't follow them how they come, but when it comes to Cora, Cora is my first daughter. When it comes to Cora, 
and Anne and her father we are a bit more particular about how you know we treat her when it comes to her emotions and all of that because we don't want to traumatize her okay we don't want to like really change her okay because everybody has their unique strengths so we don't want to change her but we want to adapt her to the society okay you can't come and be crying for unnecessary things in this in today's society you are going to get left behind you're going to be left behind that people are going to treat you badly if every every little thing you take <clears throat> if you're very emotional you take things to heart you know you love people you want everybody to just be like uh, uh, if you are doing if you're like this with people people are going to treat you badly that's the way the world is okay so i don't want to change her she's, she's a very friendly person she's, she's very um caring and all of that i don't want to change that about her but i want to just adapt it so that you know she survives in this society okay actually society of today not just survive i want her to thrive in the society of today so we are a little bit we, we treat her a little bit differently we we don't shut her down when she's being emotional but at the same time we try to let her know that this behavior is not acceptable in some certain scenarios okay you have to toughen up you have to you know you have to fight for yourself okay you have to act like you don't have to show the world that everything gets to you because the world is going to use it against you that's just fact upon fact okay yeah so with raising my kids prayers is very important i still believe in the power of prayers i believe that the prayers of my parents are the reason why i turned out the way i am okay i believe it's my parents prayers because it's not even about how they trained us and all of that because things could have easily gone really really south when i say really i mean really like i could have turned out to be a terrible human being if considering what i went through because some people give excuses of what they went through in their childhood as reasons why they are you know be basically behaving like trash human beings okay you know so i have some of those excuses as well but i do not end up as a terrible human being why i feel still believe that it's because of my parents prayers okay um yeah so prayers are for me are very very important when it comes to my kids i even ordered one book recently i think the name is praying the scriptures for your children um when i guess i'm going to show you guys i bought it so i can actually specifically pray the scriptures for my children not just pray randomly okay so when it comes to their career paths, you know what they want to be in the future what they want to do with their lives i really i'm not bothered i know my children are going to be fine they're going to end up well they're going to do well i'm not really bothered i'm not really thinking of putting them in any it's time now it's time to enjoy themselves i mean cora is barely six okay so now it's time to enjoy her life so anything she wants to do allow her to do it. you want to play ballet today okay you want to uh, do painting okay you want to do youtube okay even though the youtube part uh, i'm not still sure but you want to do I, I allow her film videos i actually have videos of cora where she's like complete videos of beginning to end i actually have them but i'm still skeptical about posting them anyway um anything they want to do with their lives i allow them to do it i'm not really so particular about academics i'm not particular about how i want them to do well in school but i'm not really so particular like my one is the one that's particular so we are we have a good balance because him is particular about you you must get all your you must get 100 over 100 you must do your assignments well you must do this one me for, but for me when it comes to their work eh, yeah whatever just do well if you do well fine if you don't do well okay we'll, we'll try to help you the way we can i am more particular about them developing better social skills you know life lessons you know just being round well-rounded good human beings okay because in fact, I think one of my biggest fears, actually, if I have, if I had a fear, one of my biggest fears was raising kids that will not turn out to be God fearing, you know, useful kids that will impact their world. That's in, I, 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 I don't, you see, eh, this idea of somebody giving birth to children, suffering all their lives, and then children end up as riffraffs, like. I don't know how those women cope. I don't know how they do it, but me, I know fits. I can't cope. Like I can't cope with such. I, I can't. Cope, I can't cope with such outcome, considering all that I'm putting into my children. Okay, so God-fearing children, lovers of God, you know, soldiers in the kingdom army, you know, like recruiters for heaven. Okay, heaven recruiters. Okay, <laughs> soul winners, and you know, basic good human beings that will change the world. Okay, shake nations for good. Is what I am particular about. Yeah, if they choose to get married, let them get married to the right spouses. I'm going to be a hawk, hawk eye mom. Like, it's not anybody that's going to enter my house. <laughs> now I understand how my parents felt when I brought my husband home and they were like, who is this person? From where to where? <laughs> you know? I understand how they felt. If you guys don't know how my story, the story of how my parents met my husband, then maybe I'll link it down below or just scroll down my channel, you'll find it. I'm sure I now understand why how they felt, how they felt, because if my child tomorrow brings one guy to my house and tells me, Mommy, this guy I like or whatever, and I'm not really sure of how the guy is, I'm gonna I'm gonna revolt. Okay, not really, but I'll try and 
I think the, the thing is just to raise your kids right and then hope for the best. Okay, if you raise good kids, I think that they will, they will actually gravitate towards good people. I, that's what I feel. Um, supported by your prayers as well. Pray for their spouses, kind of people that you want them to marry. You know, God will do it for you. Anyway, I think I have talked enough. This was just a chit chat. I wanted you guys to just let me know your thoughts in the comment section. What you think about everything that I said. How are you guys raising your kids? What are your greatest fears as moms? And you know, all of that. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye guys. Mwah.